Gases, pressure, and temperature notes. Okay, in a gas, the particles are very far apart. Gases diffuse or spread out to fill a container. Well, just think about it. If somebody sprays perfume in one part of the classroom, um, eventually the entire classroom is going to smell it at some point. Now, obviously, as the further away it gets, the more diffuse it gets, I guess like you could say, the less you actually smell it, but the smell will still be there. Um, gas molecules move relatively fast. They also collide with each other. These collisions do not result in any energy loss. These collisions are called elastic collisions. Um, gas molecules also collide with the walls of a container along with anything else in the container. Now let's talk about pressure. Pressure is the force acting on a certain area. Gas molecules create pressure in a container when they collide with the walls of the container. Oops, that should say they collide. When they collide with the walls of the container. Atmospheric pressure is pressure of the atmospheric gases. Okay, atmospheric pressure is measured with a barometer. There are several pressure units which we're going to be converting between in this unit. Millimeters of mercury is what you're probably used to hearing. They use that a lot if you watch the weather station and they talk about the barometer, they will talk about millimeters of mercury. It's probably the only metric system type unit that we use here in America. Then there's atmospheres. Then you got TOR. TOR is a very old unit and every once in a while it pops up. So we're going to learn to convert just in case you do happen to see something with that in it. PSI is something that you, well, especially guys should be used to. PSI is what you fill up your t tire with. You know, 32 PSI or pounds per square inch is the amount of pressure, is the air pressure in your tires. So that's definitely an American one. I don't, well, yeah, it wouldn't be um, in over in Europe. They use something else, but okay. Then you have Pascals or PA. This is the SI unit of pressure. Now remember, way back when we talked about the metric system, the SI is basically, it's called the System International. It's the international system of measurement that the entire world goes by as far as scientifically. So it's to kind of keep everything the same. So your SI unit of pressure is Pascals. They're tiny. We won't be using those. We do, however, use kilo Pascals a lot. And that's a thousand Pascals. Well, of course, kilo means a thousand, right? Remember that from the metric system? Okay, conversion factors. One atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Um, it's also equal to 101.3 kPa which is also equal to 14.7 PSI, which is also equal to 760 Tor. All of these are equal to each other. So depending on what two units you're looking at in a conversion, in a pressure conversion, you use one of these, one, two, three, four, one of these five. Okay, for example, if you wanted to convert 981 millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, well, let's write out the conversion factor real quick. So if you remember back on the other slide, 760 millimeters of mercury equals one atmosphere. Now, we're going to put that into a picket fence. These picket fences are just like your mole-to-mole -mole picket fences. So we're going to put our 981 millimeters of mercury. And we're going to write our picket fence, okay? Now, we're going to put this conversion factor into our picket fence. Now, we have millimeters of mercury on top, so we need to put this on bottom. So, we're going to put 760 millimeters of mercury on the bottom, which means we put 1 atm on top. Millimeters of mercury cancel, and now you have 981 divided by 760, which equals 1.29 atm. So yes, we're still using picket fences. I know, you, you guys are so thrilled, I'm sure. Okay, our next example, example two, is convert 375.9 tors to kilopascals. So let's go ahead and write our conversion factor. So we'll go back and look at all those conversion factors and we find that 760 tors is equal to 101.3 kPa. 
Because remember, all five of those things were equal to each other. So we just pick out the two we need and set them equal to each other. So we're going to put 375.9 tour in the top part of our picket fence. And now we have to put these two things. So we're going to put 760 tour at the bottom so that the tours cross out, which means we put 101.3 kPa on top. Now, when we do this, we're going to be doing one of those multiplications where we're going to multiply across the top. So 375.9 times 101.3 gives us 38078.67 divided by 760, and that equals 50.10, oops, not tours, it's KPA. Now, if you didn't want to do this step right here with the 38078, you can just multiply the two and then on your calculator just hit divide by 760 and you'll get the right answer. Okay, so you don't have to actually do this middle step. Some people like to, that's why I wrote it down. Okay, now let's talk about temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. When gas molecules move, they have kinetic energy. You measure that kinetic energy as temperature. Now there are three main temperature scales. You got Fahrenheit, which looks like degree F, and that's what we use here in the United States. And we are the only country to use Fahrenheit. Everybody else uses the next two. Well, everybody else uses Celsius. So if you go over to, to Europe, everything is in degrees Celsius. Now, in science, we do use Celsius, but when we're talking about gas laws, we need absolute temperature, and that's Kelvin, okay? So, and it's not degrees, there's no degrees in it, it's just a K. Okay, with gases, you will only need to use the Kelvin temperature scale only. Um, so these are the two conversion factors that you will have to be able to do. So you're gonna have to be able to convert between Kelvin and Celsius and Celsius to Kelvin. Because a lot of times in the problems, I'll give it to you in Celsius because Celsius is what you read. Um, it, that's what's out in the real world. But when you're trying to, to do these gas law calculations, it has to be in Kelvin. It has to be in the absolute temperature scale. Okay, so you have to be able to go back and forth. It's really easy. Kelvin is degree Celsius plus 275. So zero Kelvin, which is the absolute bottom, <clears throat> is, well actually that would be the next one. So Celsius, so 100, let's look at zero degrees Celsius, okay, which is the freezing point of water. To convert it to Kelvin, you would take zero plus 273, which is 273 Kelvin. So 273 Kelvin is the, basically the freezing point of water. Now to convert back to Celsius, you take the Kelvin temperature and subtract 273. So zero Kelvin, which is where nothing moves, everything is dead. In fact, the universe is still only at four degrees Kelvin, or four Kelvin, it's not degrees, four Kelvin. So there is nothing in the whole entire universe that's at zero Kelvin at this moment. But zero Kelvin would be negative 273 degrees Celsius. And it's like negative 400 and some odd degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty darn cold. Okay, let's look at two examples. So what is 79 degrees Celsius in Kelvin? So Kelvin is degrees Celsius, which in this case is 79, plus 273. Whoops, that doesn't look like a 73 to me. So let's erase that. Okay, 273, and that's 352 Kelvin. And now notice I did not put a degree sign. It's not degrees Kelvin, it is just Kelvin. Okay, so next one, what is 189 Kelvin in degrees Celsius? Well, degrees Celsius is the Kelvin temperature, which is 189 minus 273. And that gives me negative 84 degrees Celsius. Now, if you were to get, if you got these mixed up and you somehow got a negative Kelvin, you know you did something wrong. Zero Kelvin is it, it's the bottom. Not, there is no temperature lower than zero Kelvin. That's where everything is dead, nothing moves, period. Zero Kelvin is it. So if you get a negative 84 Kelvin, you know you did something wrong. 
Okay, well this is it. So um, we will be doing 9.1 to 9.15. So have a good night. Bye.